Well, hello everyone and welcome to Health Chats Among Friends. My name is Deidre Kindred. I am the owner of Your Healthcare Nurse Advocates. We have started a Health Chats Among Friends podcast because we know it is so hard to get reputable, available resources in your area. So tonight I'm honored to have James Jackson with Team Logic IT. Hi, James. Hey, how you doing? Well, great. I'm doing great. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, like I said, my name is James Jackson. I am the CEO of Team Logic IT of Irving, where we provide IT solutions to uh, businesses, organizations, but also, you know, we love to help the community. So we also do work in the community as far as helping out those individuals who can just use, utilize IT and knowledge, right? So, but our focus is helping these small businesses organization be able to leverage technology to their advantage to be able to grow their businesses or and help uh, keep them safe, keep their data safe from mm -hmm. cybersecurity threats as well as you know ransomware and things of that nature. Awesome. Well, this is certainly a hot topic, especially in our day and age. Even before COVID, this was a hot topic. And it's right. even a hotter topic now with COVID, with cybersecurity and identity theft especially in the healthcare arena. So yes. tell us some of the things that you have learned as far as cybersecurity and healthcare. Why are the thieves so excited about healthcare businesses? Well, the reason they're excited about healthcare businesses is because over the years, these cyber, cyber criminals have changed their attack, uh, mm -hmm. approach of attack. They used to you know, go to for individuals individually to get their data. But then they start realizing that if we attack healthcare uh, businesses such as you know doctors offices, dental offices, uh, psychiatrists, uh, those in those healthcare fields who has all this data of people, right, collection of their data, they know they're able to get enough information to be able to steal their identity that way. So instead of attacking you know a hundred different people to get a hundred uh, identities to sell on the dark web, they can attack one you know doctor's office. And get hundreds of identity at one time, so that's where the uh, the change and why it's such a big deal when it comes to cybersecurity now, and why they're attacking particularly the healthcare industry. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, fall of 2020 there was a 45 percent. Um, oh, excuse me, first of all, I'll get ahead of myself. Fall of 2020, uh, they released uh, uh, a memo stating that that they have seen a rise a huge spike in the number of healthcare companies being attacked and infected with ransomware. And then from October to November and December of 2020, there was a 45% increase, which was around, so roughly there's probably about 400 attacks a week on healthcare companies. And that jumped to over an average of 600 a week in November and December. Wow, wow. So what are they <laughs> after? What are they looking for? So they're looking for that data. So what they would do is they would want to, especially when it comes to in ransomware, they want to attack them. Like, so they'll take a, they'll go after a doctor's office because like mm -hmm. I said, they have hundreds of patients maybe, right? Mm -hmm. They want to get the names, the addresses, social security numbers, and even and any other personal information they may have on file because if they had that information, they can sell that on the dark web. Their goal is not to use it themselves most of the time. It's just to sell it to other people who would then want to use that to steal your identity. Right. Right. And some people have never heard of the dark web. <laughs> yeah, you most know? people have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the um, identity thieves, they make their money. <laughs> yes. And, right? and so basically the dark web is kind of like this under section of the Internet where all your cyber criminals and those people on the black market come to get the identity. So mm -hmm. a, a cyber criminal will maybe steal your data Say I have your social security number, I have your you know, address, or let's say I just have your address and your name and date of birth. That's enough information for them to potentially, right. you know, open up a credit card in your name, yeah. you know, Go take out a somewhere. <laughs> yeah, all, all kinds of things. So uh -huh. for them, they just want to get those critical pieces and they sell that off to people on the dark web who will say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, and they sell it for, you know, it can be anywhere. It can be for a dollar. It can be for a thousand dollars. Just all depends on what information they have, how much data they have. But for them, that dark web is such a, it's like, it just, it's just the cyber world of like an underground, you know, criminal active organization. Right, right. It's big business. Yes. So what, have, 
Tell me, I know I've heard some things uh, from time to time. I've heard, oh, well, they can have my credit. Uh, I don't have no money. <laughs> so what are some of the outlandish things you've heard? And tell me how you responded. Oh, well, so like, like, like you said, most, the most, a lot of times the most outlandish thing I usually hear is the whole, um, or they can just take whatever. I don't have money. It don't matter to me. I ain't got nothing anyway. And, you know, and it's kind of like, well, you, that could be true, but you don't want to get worse into debt, right? Or have to worry about going through this whole process of, um, you know, your identity being stolen. Mm -hmm. Now you having to you know, maybe shut down accounts, have to contact debitors saying, like, I didn't do it. Yeah, it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's cases out here where people, it took several years right. to clear up their name, get all these hits removed. And, and a lot of people only think that identities are only going for those people who have, you know, <laughs> good credit or have a lot of money or, you know, no, they're, they're looking for anyone. Um, there's actually been a, a, a rise in cyber criminals actually targeting kids because they know that one, these kids has a, you know, it's, they have nothing to their name, right? So they'll easily be able to get that and be able to get a bunch of credit cards open and, and, and they're actually doing it in unique ways. I mean, they're finding out how like just cyber criminals are looking at your Facebook post saying happy, yeah fifth birthday to you know little timmy mm -hmm. and oh okay you posted this on you know january 10th uh, uh 2021 okay that means he's five years old so he'll born you know this year this this now they have his birthday they know his name they know they know his last name from your name so now they're able to have critical pieces of information to potentially get credit card in his name or something like that and they're running that up and and so yeah a lot of, like I said, the most outlandish things usually people just not really taking heed to the, the how big mm -hmm. of an issue this really could be if your identity right. is stolen. Right, right. I could, we could go on about so many stories. I don't want to scare people. <laughs> right, right. I don't want to scare mean, people. <laughs> right. You know? So as a small business owner of a home health company or right. a small business owner of a financial company or any business owner that handles social security, state of birth, what would your advice be to a business owner that's saying, oh, man, I, they're not going to bother me. I don't have much or I can't afford it. So what would be your word of caution or advice? My word of caution would be this. Um, I believe the number and it might have changed from last year, but going into 2020, I believe it was like over a of the ransomware attacks and, and cybersecurity attacks, I believe the number was over 60% were small businesses. So for those people who like I said, I'm a small business, I'm not, I'm not a threat, they're going to have to, no, you're, you're more of a threat because one, they know that it's harder to crack into a Capital One or, you know, mm -hmm. even though these companies have breaches, a lot of times that comes from an internal situation. Um, they know it's harder to crack into these bigger companies because they have such an extensive IT you know, infrastructure. But it's easier to go after the individual or the small businesses and small or medium sized one because, like I said, most of the time they don't have a, a, a proper IT setup. So it's easier to get that data, that data from them. So things I always tell small business owners and is to make sure that one, that you really are paying attention and have, uh, to the IT side of your business, um, meaning that you have endpoint protection on your devices, make sure those are secure, that that those are, uh, and that not just any, not just anyone, um, there's because not all are created equal. A lot of people do believe that, but as someone who provides these services for a little, I always tell people, I can offer you the bottom of the barrel if that's what you want, but I don't, owe, I would let them know, like, there are some that are worse off than others. So, and honestly, I practice not even offering those unless someone just like, hey, I want the cheapest cost, period, no matter what, but that does come with risk. So, I always tell them, be, treat this like you would, you know, treat your ba your business like you would your kid almost. Like you want, you know, to, you want the best for your kid, you know, so you want, should want the best for your business, you know, and with it. And so, you know, you want to make sure you have solid protection of your devices. You want to make sure that you're patching your devices with security. Cause a lot of times people don't understand the security updates on your computer are very important. You know, most of the time we just sit here and say, Oh, I'm gonna put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. Cause we don't feel like waiting for it to download and then install yeah, and go yeah. through the whole process. Trust yeah. me, I'm guilty of it myself. I me know. too, me too. <laughs> but 
it's very important that we do those things because those that is what help us keep our computers safe because mm -hmm. again, when those updates come out that's usually to fix a vulnerability that windows have identified or what well, i should say microsoft has identified as a, a as a vulnerability within windows that they want to patch and make sure that you're that you're protecting your data and your information on your computer the same thing with making sure that your employees are trained or even if it's just you and it's just yourself. You want to make sure that you're trained mm -hmm. and have understanding of phishing and, and those phishing emails that may come through because they're getting really, really good out there at make up uh, assimilating of uh, you know an actual Amazon. Because what they'll do is sometimes you know they come from an Amazon, they'll come from a you know Bank of America or something like that, and you may have a you know Bank of America account and you're like, oh, you know. Bank of America is telling me I need to change this. Okay, you may not think nothing mm. of it because trust me, they look really identical to what you you see from a Bank of America email. The only differences would be is if you dig a little deeper and click into like maybe look at the sender, that would look a little funny. So just knowing those things to look at in those fish in those emails to spot a phishing scam. To uh, and then also making sure you have your filters on your on your inbox sets where it catching these kind of things that could be uh, spam. Uh, you want to make sure you also it's good for Ben's to have what we like to call, you know, some kind of email security to where it's mm -hmm. also, it's like it sits on the outside before it gets to your inbox to check and it's, it's blocking stuff from coming, uh, any spam from um, messages coming in. So those are kind of some small things I always recommend to those small businesses as far as protecting yourself from these, from helping from these kind of attacks when it comes to just even entering your network. That's a great tip. So what about, I'm a, say I'm a senior. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got 40, 50, 60 years to go before I'm a senior. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. I was I know we, but it's hypothetical because you ain't nowhere near there. <laughs> so as, as a uh, senior that's, you know, dabbling with the internet and, you know, mm -hmm. at home, or maybe I'm concerned about my mom or dad surfing the internet uh, right. because they're not too savvy. What, Give me one or two tips that you would give uh, someone. So someone I would get who were um, like you if you're worried about like for myself example uh, for my uh, own self I'll give example mm -hmm. my grandparents you know uh, my grandfather gets on the internet check his email and things like that but he also you know he do some online shopping sometimes or you know mm -hmm. you just want to check out you know Yahoo read articles one of the biggest things we uh, we did for set him up was make sure that um, one. I had some. I had uh, uh, a filter in place uh, for his web browsing to make sure that it is catching potential harmful sites. That it pops up with alert saying, "Hey, we're, we're this site seems a little risky. You may not want to proceed. Do mm -hmm. you want to proceed?" Right. So that mm -hmm. way, if you, if you hey, if you see this, don't go. Now, unless you just know, like, okay, this is where I'm trying to go, and I know this is a safe site, and it's yeah. doing this message, you can proceed. But if you see that back away, right? Um, even to the point, depending on how much you control, because the reason why I always recommend that, and even if I say, if if it's the person themselves, you want to protect yourself, if you're the elder, by having those kind of filters in place, that way, hey, this does seem like a sketchy site. Okay, well, maybe I should not purchase nothing from here, or mm -hmm. I shouldn't go here. If, it, or if you're doing it for uh, for an elder in your family, I even recommend sometimes going, if, depending on how much you trust them on the internet, setting parameters on websites they can go to so that way um not only are you protecting them from potentially maybe going to a bogus website that sells something that could potentially just take their information and run off with it but also protecting them from going to a site that could potentially download that can they can put spyware on their computer put ransomware on the computer something like that so is those i would always say the tip i would say is just to have some kind of uh, browsing filter in place or turned on as well as having some kind of endpoint protection on the computer itself, like a McAfee uh, or some kind of brand that will allow you to, uh, Sophos is another good one, that will allow you to protect your computer, defend it, and also uh, keep your information safe. Wow. So what type of clients do you serve at Team Logic? We serve primarily, like I said, we focus on small and mid-sized businesses, but it's any range, like, and like, uh, we really want to uh, focus on uh, just helping people, right? Our goal is to help mm -hmm. people. So while we while we serve businesses, we also do you know individuals help them and, and guide them. So where it may be that they, um, you know, don't need our full IT services, but like I said, but if someone was to say, hey James, I've got a question, can you direct me and you know 
what kind of you're saying endpoint security for my device can you explain that we believe in just helping educate via that way as well right saying hey this is a good one you can buy this from here this is a, a good one offer so while we focus on businesses when it comes to individuals and co people in the community we, we definitely believe in just being a resource being an ally in our own community and giving that information as they need it and, and pointing them in the right direction i love that i love that so um if someone well let me, let me ask this so um little classes or little i know you have a newsletter so how can someone sign up for your newsletter they can sign up for our newsletter by just going to, uh the team lot to teamlogicit.com slash irving texas well irving tx excuse me and they could go there and they'll see a link on, on the website to sign up for our newsletter um and that's pretty much and that's the best way uh to be able to get that or they can just contact me directly uh at jay jackson at teamlogicit.com and just say hey i will i would love to get the newsletter and i can always just send i can add them to the list them, um, for them wow so what if they had a question about you know a particular um you know issue that they were having in their business or what if they think they've already been breached can you guys help with that as well yes definitely if they if they have any questions they can always reach out reach out to us uh me directly and like i said jay jackson at teamlogicit.com or they can go on our website. We have a consultation request. All our consultations are always free. So any questions they may have, whether they think they're at risk, whether they think they've already been exposed, they can reach out to us and, you know, we can have that conversation. I can help, fi I can find out what it is that their concerns are and then help guide them down a path to correct that issue that they're facing. That's wonderful. I've taken that assessment. Um, it was before I met you though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was great. Uh, they told me we were doing pretty good, but still, you know, you still, it's not a one and done. It's a continuous right. process, right? Right. Right. But yeah. Now I have my IT. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. awesome. Well, I love the tips. It's so much we could have talked about and broken it down. So what I'm doing this first year or two with Health Chats and my friends is just introducing my resource partners and letting right. them get to know. So then I would love to have you back and then we can hone sure. in on a specific topic. Your expertise and your guidance, of course, but we would love to have you back. I love to be back. Like I said, I'm um, all about helping the community, helping other businesses, uh, you know, make sure their IT and their data is safe. I mean, um, the way the world's changed, especially with COVID, you know, impacting everything, IT is definitely one of those resources that a lot, a lot of small businesses can benefit from just having the right knowledge about how to protect their data. Right, and it doesn't hurt to check. I mean, even if you're right. a small business and say you got four uh, clients, it doesn't make a difference. We right. still owe that to those clients that we serve exactly. to protect them as well. Exactly. So yeah, that's what it's all about. Yep. Well, James, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been a lovely chat. Next time we'll try to make it much more pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you know, to spin identity theft and cybersecurity in a, right. in a light way, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's such a heavy topic. You know, it's one of the things that, you know, it's, you, you gotta, it, it's, you gotta try to just really present it how it is, just the facts and say, hey, look, you know, this is what, this is, this is the you know what it is and it's not it's no way to really get around the facts of that it is a prevalent issue especially in the healthcare industry right now and you know for those who are in healthcare they need to address it and those who who have any kind of identity with healthcare providers which will be all of us we do need to make sure we are taking that into our thought process when we're looking at not only um you know maybe we're looking at going to a healthcare provider or something like we should mm -hmm. always think about and ask those questions when you're going to a doctor hey um just curious you know are you taking the proper measures to make sure that my yes my information is secure at your facility absolutely i always tell my uh clients that that's a great question to ask your home health company mm -hmm. your doctor's office your patient advocate whoever right. is handling your medical care because that's your social security your date of birth your driver's license your insurance yep. card and <laughs> medical yeah medical identity theft is huge it's huge it's big and yeah. so 
And so that's one message I would definitely love to say that I, more people should not be afraid to question those who are dealing with their data to say, hey, how are you securing my data? Because right. if that gets stolen, they have a breach, you're exposed now. Yes, 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 yes. Well, James, again, thank you again. I want you to tell people how they can get in contact with you if they have more questions or they want to take that uh, business assessment. Sure. Yes, if you want to, uh, if you have questions, uh, any com uh, concerns about your business, or you want to have an assessment, you can contact me at uh, jjackson at teamlogicit.com, or you can call me at 972-703-9986. Uh, anytime, any, anytime, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm always willing to help. Yes, he is. I can vouch for that. Well, thank you again, James. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Health Chats Among Friends. My goal here is to bring you reputable resources that you can trust. Again, this is Deidre Kendrick. I'm a nurse advocate, educator, and navigator. And thank you for tuning in.